On today's episode of Detroit Performs, we look back on the best of season two so far. The U of M Health System brings arts to the bedside and beyond. A skate shop dreams up, designs, and produces unique skateboards. And a group of students who show their support for veterans and their service dogs through a creative project. It's all ahead on this edition of Detroit Performs. Funding for Detroit Performs is provided by the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs, MGM Grand Detroit, and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, I'm DJ Oliver and welcome to Detroit Performs. It's that time of the year again when I get to share with you some of my favorite segments of season two. I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. Our next segment takes us down Highway 94 to the University of Michigan Health System. There, Elaine Sims is a director of the Gifts of Art program in which art galleries, concerts, and bedside musicians are just a taste of the entertainment the program offers its patients at U of M. You enter the hospital as a patient, you've got a life and death experience, you're all alone. I mean, you may have your loved ones, but you lose your identity, you're in a hospital gown. So when someone comes with music, someone comes with art, there's that magical component. We hear patients say over and over, my healing began the day you came to my room. Gifts of Art program was actually planned as this hospital that we're sitting in was being planned and designed in the early 1980s. So it actually opened with the hospital in 1986 and has been here ever since. Today I would say that Gifts of Art is one of the most comprehensive programs in the country, if not the world. We have nine galleries throughout the health system that we change every two months. So we have about 50 shows a year that we put on. If you want to get out of your room and take a walk or as you're going for tests, you can see the artwork, you can see pieces of art, you can see pottery, you can see all kinds of things, which it does help with the healing because it gives you a distraction from what your own problems are. We have had people um, especially in this space here when they come out of the clinic and they'll say, you know, I came out and the first thing I saw was this beautiful art on the wall and how that really, you know, helped me get through, you know, that moment in my life. So a lot of our artists look at it as, um, you know, giving back to community. We have weekly concerts every Thursday. They're inside during the year. And in the summer, when there isn't rain, we let loose a little bit outside. And this is a Cajun group. We do invite every patient the evening before and the morning. They get an invitation on their meal tray so they know what's happening. Over the years, we started moving things closer and closer to where it really has an impact, and that's at the bedside of patients. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Patients come up with tears in their eyes, and, and an, you know, an artist reads the audience members, and for them it is such an authentic moment, it's such a personal connection. It takes them to, you know, the essence of why they make music. The hospital has a good thing going on here. When they, you're in a gloomy spot where you look out the window and it's so sunny, but you can't be out there. So by being in here and them having these small gifts of art, you know, it's, it helps get me through this time period. Each time it was like perfect timing uh, when a musician came in and they lifted and encouraged me. 
whatever I was going through that day. And the variety of music, oh my goodness, just, just wonderful, wonderful. Everything else in my mind disappears. At the moment they start playing, I'm able to go into another world and I just relax. My, take, my tension goes down in my shoulders and, and then I, I just have uh, more hope for the future and what's ahead. Yeah, well, here come my doctor with some good news, I hope. Get me out of this place. I am tired of all this dope, yeah. Being able to, to laugh, it was therapy to my spirit and to my body to be able to, to laugh. They tell you, you know, to be stress-free. And um, uh, for me, you know, I was always stressed, but I made myself stressed a lot of times, worrying about things. So then the gift of art would come in and kind of de-stress me. <laughs> I love being here. I love wandering around the hospital and seeing the impact on people. We're pretty well known through the hospital, those of us who put the art out there, which is wonderful. The first visual art that I notice when I'm brought to a room is the one, the artwork that is hanging in the room, and that can be changed. I have about 30 plus volunteers that go daily to the patient floors and they take a cart full of artwork, and the patients get to choose the artwork for their rooms um, during their stay. Usually once a week, a uh, cart comes by, somebody will come in your room and ask if you like the art that you have, uh, or they'll say, would you like to see what else we have to offer? And each and every time, since I'm in here numerous times, the book is different. So it's kind of nice to be able to say, oh, I'd like to change that. It's like, it's like changing the wallpaper in your house. You, it's, it's a nice, refreshing thing to look at. Georgianne, here I've got an art project that we can do for later. Um, it has handmade papers, ribbons. Um, it's a greeting card. You're not going to come to the hospital with a bag full of crafts. So for them to be able to bring it to you is, is very important, very helpful. They have an art cart that comes with projects. They have all the things you need to make, whether it's a card. I've made bracelets. Uh, they have coloring books for adults. So it's very, it's very nice to have that. And, and once again, if the person that is bringing that to you sees that, that you're like a sponge to the arts, they offer other things that maybe they don't have on their cart, but they can bring to you. I'm just really glad that this program is here. It really is a partnership between the arts world and the healthcare world and both sides come to it with expertise, but with goals, you know, with a vision. I still have things I haven't done that I want to do. We're starting a dance for Parkinson's group with our Parkinson's outpatients, and I'd love to have dance and movement at the bedside. You know, studies show that just watching movement and dance has the same impact on the brain as doing the movement itself. So, there's lots more I still want to do, and I'm hoping that I can see some more of these and then pass it on to someone, because there's always going to be more. My sweet Our next segment highlights a duo dreaming of creating and designing very unique skateboards in their Ann Arbor skateboard shop. I think skateboarding has as much self-expression to it as drawing does. I think it's very creative because you can get out there and just you know, be without limits, do whatever you want, express yourself however you want, which is what I do when I draw. And a skateboard is a blank canvas. There's absolutely no limit to what I can put on there. For me, it's just a perfect outlet because I can be 100% creative. A lot of it is just carryover of my own personal style I developed when I was in school. And I'm really influenced by surrealism. I really like any kind of classic art. I like things that are representational. I've spent a lot of time in tattoo parlors, so I guess I get influenced by traditional Japanese imagery and even American traditional stuff. It's a beautiful thing. Um, 
you know, I, I love it. It's, it's incredible. Um, it's, I get to see like the whole process of it. We have these small little almost skateboard shaped pieces of paper that they'll start drawing and it'll just be a few lines here and there. At first you kind of don't know what they're going to do with it. And then you like go home for the day and come back and there's a little bit of a masterpiece on this piece of paper. So it's incredible to just see like it slowly come together as a graphic and then to see that graphic that's probably drawn up on a piece of paper that's like four inches by eight inches turn into a 30 inch by eight inch board coming to us in like a real professional condition. It's, it's really incredible to just look and be like my, my homie drew that up and then I'll apply it and uh, take it down to the park and just to see the community of Ann Arbor just love it so much. It, uh, it's really an incredible feeling. Here in Ann Arbor, there's a, there's a strong sense of community. Um, you can get that feel walking around downtown. A lot of people are, are big on like what's happening here, like let's keep it here, let's help each other out. So it's cool to see like that our skateboard shop has an organically grown Ann Arborite and uh, to see the kid who grew up down the street come up with professional style boards is really something to be proud of. When I go down to the skate park, which I do pretty much every day after work, I see kids riding my boards. I mean, that's a, that's a great feeling because then I know, I mean, it's not only something that I enjoy doing, but, you know, the community has had a pretty positive response to it as well. The flop house is just a way for me to stay connected. We did, uh, the total ended up being 160 decks for them for the grand opening. I never really knew anything about how the graphics were designed growing up, buying skateboards and, and being in the skateboard culture. So I never got to see it put together. I just always figured that there was some behind the scenes computer guy who just like came up with these things like it was, it was easy to do. And then to first hand watch these things be drawn out by hand not just like computer animated. You know, I really get to see the time and the effort that's, that's logged into coming out with a finished piece. And something that's been really cool around here is um, we do like custom style skateboards. So people can come to us with their own ideas and um, we'll take their idea, use our artist's really incredible ability to put their idea on a canvas and we'll see the community's ideas on the bottom of a skateboard. So that's really cool. I mean, we've had all sorts of different people who want these, these different style boards. We've had like rap groups who want their kind of logos and stuff on there, which is, has turned out really incredible. We have people from like Southern Pacific Islands that have their own style to it. So just in, the small time that we've been open, we've been able to see all sorts of different cultures, tastes on, on artwork and what they would want on the bottom of a skateboard. It's something I gotta get out there. Like I've found, it's, I guess it's just a source of personal fulfillment. The way I feel when I draw something that I'm proud of or, you know, I'd see Johnny on his skateboard throw a big trick and get that smile on his face. I mean, it's just fulfilling to me. For me, drawing up graphics and stuff is never, that's not my strong suit. I'm lucky if I like remember all the arms and legs on a stick figure, so. For me, the skateboarding part is the creative aspect. When I get out there, my mind just frees up. I'm not worried about what's happening in my life, really. You know, the problems have gone away. I can do whatever I want virtually out there, you know, I can, if I want to jump on this, I can do that. You know, I can really kind of test my own abilities and strengths on a board. And uh, to, to stand on a board that's been fully put together by me and my friends, it's, uh, it's, it's got a strong sense of pride. In a way, um, a lot of the younger kids will look up to us older riders. And when I go out to the skate park, and pop some tricks that some kids like. 
and I'm, I'm doing it on the boards that I've created in a way it, it seems like uh, I can show these kids that if you dream big and work hard at something, you can get there and do it too. Our next segment features Stiggy's Dogs, an organization that trains rescue dogs to be service dogs for veterans. Recently, a group of elementary school students wanted to show their support for Stiggy's and the veterans with a creative service project. Check it out. Now if you guys will remember, we learned about Stiggy's dogs and what they were doing to help veterans, especially veterans who had served in Afghanistan or in Iraq. And we had learned about how they were taking animals from the Livingston County Animal Shelter and how they were pairing them with vets to make their lives a little bit better. I'm Beth Molnar and I teach um, English language arts and social studies to our team, Team Awareness. We teach fourth grade here at Navigator School. And Catherine Potoff and I teach the math and science to the entire team here at Navigator Upper Elementary School. Priscilla Homan uh, approached us about a 9-11 grant and so we got together over the summer, Catherine and I and Priscilla, and we came up with uh, a plan for the grant and, and we were granted the grant. And so uh, part of the grant was to make fanny packs for the veterans and bandanas for the dogs so that when the dog and the veteran were matched up, they would have something matching together. And um, the kids were really, really excited. The projects that the kids have come up for us, making the fanny packs, making the uh, bandanas, all of those things can be utilized, not just for our training for our veterans, but also it helps spread the word. Anything that gets people talking is a good thing. If my dog is wearing a bandana that says, I support Stiggy's dogs, or I love Stiggy's dogs, people want to know, what is Stiggy's dogs? Anytime I'm wearing a shirt, the same thing, I'm getting asked about it, what is Stiggy's dogs? So again, that all leads to education, and that really is the key. We are named in honor of our director's nephew, Benjamin Castiglione. He was killed in action in Afghanistan in 2009. And as a way to keep his legacy going and to continue to take care of his Marines, as he called them, we started Stiggy's Dogs. What we really do, the basic core and essence of us, is, is we rescue dogs from different shelters around the area and we pair those dogs with veterans that have PTSD or TBI. So, you know, our motto is rescuing one to rescue another and that is the truth of that. I love working with Pinckney Schools. This has been the third or fourth time that they have brought us back and I really believe that, you know, education and perception starts with our youth and they're just very patriotic here. They came up with this great idea about the fanny pack and bandanas, which work perfectly within our motto. Um, the fanny packs are great because we, when they first start training, you know, they'll need them for some treats or to have do, you know, doggy bags in them. We set from the very beginning a tone that we are involved with the community, community service projects. Service learning is a huge aspect of our team. And so, before we took on the project, really with the students, we spent some time going over the website, talking about Stiggy's dogs, and so we talked a little bit about what service dogs can do for humans. Our dogs are trained for a number of tasks. Uh, the biggest one, obviously, being the dog caring about the emotional state of their handler. That is a 24-7 job. They have to monitor that handler, whether they're awake or asleep. And it really segued nicely into our our service project with Stiggy's dog. So the students were really invested right off the bat in thinking how can we help people who've given so much service to our country. It was a really nice fit. Anything with animals and, and especially dogs, there, there just seems to be this genuine draw to, to be an active participant. And it was really amazing to me that many of the children really took the time to plan out and, and really think about what they wanted to say. And we talked about how this is a gift to a veteran from you and it really needs to look nice and it really needs to mean something. It felt really special to make these for people who serve for our country. I hope it goes to someone good who needs one. Uh, they just have such a simple way of, of understanding and appreciating you know what military and veterans do uh, or have done so uh, just to see you know their little hands you know doing this little artwork and all these little pictures and the words they put on there, you know, you wouldn't expect a lot of them to understand that, but they actually do. 
This is my bag and it says Stiggy's dogs right here. It's got a little doggy bone and then doggy footprints and some stars. And then on the top it says, thank you for your service. It has dog prints and um, USA and a bunch of stars. I don't know, I guess when I look at this, when I think of the student's artwork <laughs> and I see little dog bones and I see stars and tiny little paw prints at the top, it makes me smile. And I guess if I were a vet and I'm reaching in every day for a little treat for my dog, I'll be thinking that some fourth grader made this for me. And I, I guess you just can't help but feel good about this. I get, I get really teary when I think about it. It's just so sweet. And they really put time and energy into each one of their artworks that they did. And just seeing the pride that they had as they were showing them to us, um, I mean, that just fills my heart with joy. Oh, I love the bone. Look at that. Wow, beautiful. Children want to give, they want to feel like they're productive, they want to show how much they really truly care. And that's why we're here. We need to help them find ways that they can give back to their community. And I think art is an actual, pretty, pretty much an easy way for them to do that because really, I was pleasantly surprised how many children had artistic flair and ability. Um, I put a bone up here and for like the treats and stuff to go in. And like I put paw prints and I said, um, a man's best friend. This is my card. It says, thank you on the front. And then I put a flag. They really took some time and effort on the thank you cards to the veterans. So, um, I mean, that's another art, that's a different avenue for artistic expression. So the kids maybe that weren't as good as the, at the fanny pack <laughs> maybe did a really fine job on the, on the card that they made or vice versa. So it was, it was allowing that medium of art to come out in several different ways. It might start out as just something as, as simple art, but the meaning behind that and what it turns out to be was so much more. And you take this project, for example, we got to sit and talk with kids and they got to ask questions with our veterans and to touch these dogs and they got to learn about service dogs. So even though it was just an artwork, it, it transpired into so much more. I guess when we have it on the dog, um, I'd have him with me all the time and I can see it all the time. And I see what somebody's done and he's wearing it. It's just, it lets you know that you're not alone. You know, somebody else is. They understand why you have this dog and they understand the things you went through. For what our military do for us and the freedoms that we're, we're allowed in this country because of them is so important to instill in them, especially at this early age. Um, I think it's it, what makes our country great. I feel great giving stuff to people that once helped us in the Army, and I like, feel great giving them stuff back in honor. They may not fully understand PTSD, but understanding that there are people out there that need that extra bit of help. Um, you never know what a person's dealing with. I believe that art is a great therapy. And in trying to, like with service dogs, we're using that as one form of therapy. You know, there are all different alternative types. So seeing that the kids are doing this with art and seeing how that is also helping, I think that there's a great way to combine both. Thank you guys for bringing that awareness and making this come full circle. You know, spreading the word about what we've done, just a small project, maybe that will spur on other teachers to do service learning projects. There are so many things out there that you can do. You guys were so creative. Seriously, there were so many cool things. I, I just have tears in my eyes. This was wonderful. Believe it or not, thank you means so much to these veterans. It really does. Having, we'll be out training and somebody will come up and, oh, are you a veteran? And they'll say yes, oh, thank you for your service. And you can see this change come over them and, and the, the pride that they have that somebody took the time to recognize and to see children recognize it too. It's just awesome. Dear veterans, I want to say thank you for all of your service to our country. Thanks to you, I don't have to worry about anything bad happening to me in my country. I am grateful for how you have kept my country and me safe. Now I don't have to worry. Your friend Bella. Funding for Detroit Performs is provided by 
the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs, MGM Grand Detroit, and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you.